it's joy here and today's video is all about finding your first apartment as you guys know i recently moved into my first apartment in september of 2020 and this is my first apartment outside of college so i wanted to make sure i gave you a guide on all things first apartment so today we're going to cover budgeting your credit score searching for your apartment applying getting approved making deposits and all of that stuff and finally moving in so we're going to cover all of that stuff and the tips that i learned when going through this process outside of college as a new grad navigating adulting so i hope these tips help you if you're excited about this video comment down below on what your dream city to live in is and if you plan on moving into an apartment anytime soon so i'm super excited to see what cities you guys want to live in after you leave your comment make sure you go check out all the other apartment videos that i have on my channel from when i moved in they're so fun i have hauls i have decorating i have all of that stuff so go check those out and i will link my apartment playlist up here and down below so the first part of your apartment search is really about figuring out what your budget is and if you're even eligible to get your own apartment because of your credit score when you think about budget one rule that i like to follow is the 50 30 20 rule and i talk about this rule in my money habits video but basically if you didn't see that video the rule includes allocating 50 percent of your budget for needs 30% of your budget for wants and 20% of your budget for saving and investing. So if you're going to use the 50, 30, 20 rule, let's say you make $2,000 a month. That means only 50% of that, AKA $1,000 should be allocated towards your needs. And your needs includes things like your housing, your car, and any types of other bills that you have to pay off. Once you figure out what your 50% portion is, you will know if you can afford to get an apartment on your own or if you're going to need a roommate so another thing to know about getting an apartment at least in the u.s is that having enough money isn't enough you have to bring things to the table like proof of income and you also have to have a good credit score to get approved for apartment basically the higher the rent is the higher your income has to be and you also want to have a solid credit score so one thing that people do if they don't have a strong credit score is they use something called a guarantor and this could be a parent or guardian or someone who has a stronger credit score than you who basically guarantees the rent on your place in case you can't pay it so look into those things definitely talk to someone who is qualified and not just someone who just moved into an apartment if you have to go one, one of those routes to make sure that you do it right if you have any more questions about the budget or your credit i would just go to google and type in like what credit score do i need for this apartment or what is the average rent price in my city or things like that to just give you a ballpark of how much you need to spend. You can also just ask any friends or family who live in apartments that you like how much they pay because they're close to you. Hopefully they're willing to disclose that information and give you some tips on finding an apartment. After you know your budget and you have a solid credit score that will allow you to secure your apartment, let's get into how you can actually search and find the perfect apartment for you. So the first tip I would give is if you actually live in the city that you're searching for apartments in, I would just go to an area that you think you want to live in, walk around, drive around, and see if there are any buildings that stand out to you. And then that can be a starting point for your list, starting with the area that you want to live in and just literally going there and seeing if there are any buildings that you like or if you have friends who live in the same city, ask them if they like their building and consider if that's a place that you want to move. Another option for those who don't live in the city that they're moving to is using just online apartment search websites. So there's so many different apartment search websites. There's apartments.com, there's Street Easy for people searching in New York City, there's even Nooklyn for people searching in Brooklyn. I know a lot of the New York ones because I was originally going to move to New York until I had a reroute and I'm living in Philadelphia right now. Definitely use all the apartment search websites that you can. If you are a college student, try to find any Facebook groups that your university might have where people are subleasing or trying to find roommates and things like that so you can at least be affiliated and living with someone who is from your university. So when you're doing your apartment search, here are a few things to look for when you're looking at the online listing. First thing is the location. You want to look at 
the maps view and see if it's close to anything you want. One hack is if you're kind of like bougie or you want to be near things is like look up your favorite grocery store and see what apartment buildings are near that. So I think it's a well-known fact that Whole Foods are in nicer neighborhoods. So you can start by looking up Whole Foods and seeing what apartments are near that or you can start by looking up you know something that you want to be in walking distance from and see what buildings are near that so if you want to be near like a mall or something you can see what apartment buildings are near that and it doesn't have to be something super extravagant you might just want to live near a park or some pathways or something that interests you you can start there for your search on the map view other than location you want to look at the price obviously to make sure that it's in your budget a lot of listings will have a lower price just to get you to click on it but then you find out it's for a studio apartment or something very small and possibly not something that's fitting your needs next you want to look at all the photos and see if there's any like 3d views or videos where you can actually walk through the apartment building and some of the units to get a feel for what it's like there and the last thing I like to look at is the reviews so I'll look at reviews on a couple different sites First, I'll just do a Google search of that building and read some of the reviews. I'll also look at the reviews on a website like apartments.com. And if there's other reviews that come up, I'll try to read those. With reviews, you wanna take things as a grain of salt. I think that anything with lower than three stars is something to concern yourself with, but I think four and five stars are always good. When you think about it, a lot of people who leave reviews for apartment buildings are people who had a bad experience. So not everyone who had a good experience is leaving a review to kind of balance things out. So when you look at the reviews, maybe take a notebook and write down some of the things that concern you. And you can ask the leasing agent or residents when you go visit about those issues. For me personally, if I see any reviews about pest issues or break-ins, I just remove those places from my list because I felt like those were big red flags. If they were something like a smaller issue, then I still kept that apartment on my radar. So when she's been scouring the internet, it's literally a rabbit hole searching for apartments. You can do this for hours. But I would say spend most of your time online before you go to in-person visits. I would kind of take your online favorites and narrow down the list to a list of top five and then split those tours between two days. And that takes me to the next step of the apartment journey, which is scheduling your visits. So once you have your top five list of apartments think about when you're going to be able to go visit some of these apartments if you live in the city then it should be fairly easy or if you're going to have to go travel out and look at the apartments and if you have a top five then i would just do those over two days because visiting five apartments in one day probably just isn't feasible they take up a good amount of time and then also you have to drive in between them and you want to eat in between and lastly you don't want to get confused about which apartment is which so schedule your visits out spread them out equally make sure that you know the directions to get there and all of that good stuff during your visit I would say make a list of questions that you have that you want to ask about each building and also have a list of your non-negotiables because sometimes when you do your visit you get super excited and then you forget that you said you had to have a washer and dryer and then the next thing is you're like convincing yourself that not having one is okay so make those lists beforehand and when you get there you should be set to you know get all your questions answered and things like that my next piece of advice is to record your tours on video it might seem so, like something awkward to do but it's totally not you need to be able to remember which units are which so when you're recording you know record what the leasing agent is saying they don't have to be on camera but make sure you can hear what they're saying and what they're describing about the units and make sure the questions you're asking you're also having in that recording that was so helpful for me when I was deciding on which apartment I wanted because it just refresh my memory after all the tours it just got really confusing remembering which apartment was which or which building had which deals and things like that so the recordings will help you a lot so after you finish all of your visits it's time to decide on the apartment that you're going to apply for so hopefully the places you visit have open units for the move-in day that you want sometimes if you move your move-in day back a day or forward a day sometimes there's more options so once you know which unit and building you want to apply to it's time to fill out the application they've given you making sure that any types of deals or one month free rent are included and were you know written out or you're giving 
like the guarantee that that would be a part of your application. You'll fill out the application and sometimes they're online and you'll get approved like really quickly. Sometimes you have to send it to the leasing office. However the application is, make sure you fill that out and fill it out fast, especially if you're in a place with a competitive market. They're gonna run your credit when you apply to an apartment, so make sure your credit score is good and make sure that you are ready to pay an application fee and be ready to actually lock in your apartment because as soon as you're approved, they're gonna send a lease over. So one other tip is to make sure you walk through your unit before you sign the lease because sometimes you tour a unit that might be a little bit newer or just not your unit. You wanna make sure you view your exact unit before you sign the lease. Once you get your lease, make sure you review it and maybe get a second set of eyes on it because it is a contract. And then usually after you sign your lease, your security deposit is due. And that's basically a lump of money that you give to the building. And if there are no damages to your unit, you get that money back. Or if there are damages when you move out, they subtract that money. And also your first month rent will be due. I've heard of situations where people with lower credit had to pay more months rent up front if they wanted the unit. So if that applies to you, learn more about that with your leasing agent or whoever you're working with to get the apartment. So once your lease is signed and you sent off all the money that you have to pay, which is usually so much, you wanna have that lump of money you know ready and saved up it is time to plan for your move-in so when you know your move-in day think about all the things that you have to do think about what shopping you have to do if you're moving into your first apartment there's probably going to be a lot more shopping than someone who's moving in between apartments for their second or third time so i have a big apartment hole that you can watch to get inspiration on things you'll need for your apartment so you can go watch that if you need help figuring out what exact things you need for your apartment. But yeah, go shopping, you know, think about what things you wanna have the first couple days you're in your apartment. Do you wanna have food there? Do you wanna have a bed there? What things do you wanna have? And then what things can you get, you know, a few days or a few months after you move in if you have to spread your budgeting along the way. Also for moving day, are you gonna need a moving truck? Are you gonna be able to put everything in your car? Just think about all those logistics because especially if you're moving to a different state, you might have to fly in, you might have to rent a car. There's a lot of different things that come with moving moving as we all know so just try to plan those things in advance to make your moving day as stress-free as possible and the last and final step is to get your keys and enjoy your apartment after you have your keys you'll go to your unit move in sometimes they'll have a kind of paperwork that you fill out that will where you'll mark any damages that you see when you first move in so that you won't be charged for them down the road. You'll get your welcome packet, or if you live in a building that has amenities, you'll learn all about those amenities and things like that. And then it's time to enjoy your new apartment and begin paying rent every month, paying utilities and all of that fun adulting stuff. So I hope this video was helpful on outlining the process to get an apartment. Obviously this may or may not be all encompassing because I'm just speaking from my own personal experience of apartment searching. So definitely do your own research, get as much help as you can. And I hope this was a good starting point for all of you guys looking for your apartment. If you made it this far, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and also give this video a thumbs up. I continue to post vlogs and different videos about lifestyle, branding, and beauty. So make sure you join us along the way. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.